Time now for Morning Rounds with CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook and CBS News Medical Contributor Dr. Tara Narula. First up, life expectancy. A few days ago, the National Center for Health Statistics released a new report comparing the causes and patterns of death from 2015 and 2014. And for the most part, the news was not good. Life expectancy for the U.S. population as a whole actually fell from 78.9 years to 78.8. It's a very small decline, but it's a decline nonetheless, the first time since 1993 that U.S. life expectancy has fallen. The age-adjusted death rate also increased by 1.2 percent. Dr. LaPook, yeah. when it comes to the top causes of death, how does 2015 compare to 2014? Well, not well. So the only one of the top 10 causes that actually went down in, in uh, death rate was cancer, which went down slightly. Uh, death from flu and, and pneumonia, uh, that stayed stable. But of the others, they all increased slightly. So that's heart disease, cancer, we, we said did a little bit better, chronic lower respiratory diseases, unintentional injuries, that's overdoses and substance abuse deaths, falls on the elderly, things like that, stroke and Alzheimer's. And then finishing out the list of the top 10 are diabetes, influenza, pneumonia, which we said stayed the same, kidney disease and suicide. So when you start to say you're cresting there, you have to start saying, you know, what's going on here and, and, and do we have to do something differently? Tara, heart disease remains the leading cause. What factors play into that? What's really sad, Anthony, is that it doesn't have to be that way. We don't have to watch our family members, our coworkers die of heart disease. The only two risk factors that we cannot change are age and family history. All of the other risk factors are modifiable. The battle against heart disease is going to come down to three things. Education, telling people what are the risk factors, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, smoking, obesity. Awareness, teaching people about signs and symptoms of heart disease so they can act early. And then prevention. We need to be screening people starting as early as age 20 for things like high blood pressure and high cholesterol and really teaching people to modify these factors and have heart healthy lifestyle from the time they're children, not when they're 40, 50 and 60 and getting a new diagnosis of coronary disease or having their heart attack. What should health professional, what should the takeaway be for health professionals? It's very much yet, oh, listen to Tara. <laughs> Prevention, I always. Think, always listen to Tara. <laughs> like because that. when you think about it, you know, we like to do stuff to people after they get sick. And prevention really is going to be the name of the game. If you look at the top things here, unintentional injuries, for example, overdoses and substance abuse deaths, fentanyl went up dramatically. So we have a, obviously a narcotic epidemic yeah. overuse, falls in the elderly. And then when you look at suicide, you have to start saying to yourself, mental health you know how can we it's so it's so huge how do we change the stigma that's attached to it so that people can come forward and say you know they're having trouble how do we increase this preventive uh, services and treatment services for people with mental illnesses it's all wrapped up and of course with the uh, fentanyl overdoses narcotic overuse we have to start teaching doctors uh, you know how to, how to prescribe better and how to think about pain control in a better way that's right all right, next up, the distribution of diabetes. The CDC estimates that over 20 million people have the condition where high blood sugar levels can lead to severe complications like amputations and blindness. A recent report by Gallup Healthways looked at the incidence of diabetes across the country in 2015. The three states reporting the highest rates were Alabama, West Virginia, and Mississippi. The lowest incidence was among the people of Utah, followed by Rhode Island and Colorado. Tara, some of these percentages reported are, are really quite high. How prevalent is diabetes across the country? Diabetes is such a devastating disease for the individual and it inflicts a lot of collateral damage on society. It affects 29 million Americans in this country, accounts for 20 percent of our health care spending. We talked about leading causes of death. It's in the top 10. And not only that, but it's one of the leading causes of disabling disorders like amputations, blindness, kidney disease. So this is a really big problem that again comes back to the need for screening and early intervention uh, in people who may have risk factors. Doc, for folks who don't know a lot about diabetes, what is the difference between type 1 diabetes and type 2? Yeah, good time for a primer because it is confusing. So um, insulin is a hormone that helps take sugar, blood sugar, glucose from the outside of a cell to the inside of the cell. Once it's inside the cell, it can be used for energy and for other things. In type 1 diabetes, it's really an autoimmune disease. So your own body starts attacking and destroying the cells in the pancreas that help produce insulin. Mm -hmm. So you have too little insulin. You have too little insulin, the blood sugar starts building up outside the bloodstream, that's why you have increased blood sugar. Not enough getting inside the cells. Type 2 diabetes, there's plenty of insulin. The problem is that for some reason, your cells become less sensitive to the effects of the insulin. 
and one of the big causes is obesity. Mm -hmm. So with type 1 diabetes, you give insulin as an injectable form, various ways to do that. Type 2, there are lots of ways you can treat it, with insulin, with oral medications, with lifestyle adjustments like diet, exercise, and weight loss. Sometimes, as, as Tara was implying, if you just lose the weight, your type 2 diabetes, which is the vast majority, about 95% of diabetes, that can actually go down. You might not need any medication at all. Tara, there are a lot of Americans whose blood sugar is higher than the normal. I mean, how likely is this to develop into type 2 diabetes? So what you're talking about is pre-diabetes, and a lot of Americans don't even know what that really means. I yeah. see so many patients in my office who have pre-diabetes, and this is basically the beginnings of diabetes. It's where your blood sugar is higher than normal, but not at the level where you would consider somebody diabetic. The problem is that it affects one in three Americans in this country, and 90% of those people who have pre-diabetes have no awareness that they have it. And without intervention, 15 to 30 percent of pre-diabetics will go on to develop type 2 diabetes within five years. The nice thing is, as John mentioned, that you can do things to try to reverse that, things like weight loss, things like exercise, and really changing your diet. Finally, what you've been waiting for, drones. <laughs> the flying devices are extremely popular with hobbyists and photographers alike, but do they have a future in the field of medicine? According to a recent study in the journal Transfusion, the answer might be yes. Researchers at Johns Hopkins University tested drones to see if they could successfully transport, transport blood products. They conducted test flights lasting a little over 26 minutes. Post-flight testing found the drone ride did not have a negative impact on the blood. So there could be a future for fast airborne delivery of life-saving transfusions when time is of the essence. And here's something hot off of the presses. <laughs> There's a company called Zipline uh -huh. that I've been in contact with in the last 24 hours that said that starting Monday, there are going to be blood product delivery by drones in Rwanda. Wow. So these are parts of the world, you know, where, there, where especially during the rainy season, it yeah. can be really sure. hard to get blood yeah. products from one yep. place to another, and it's starting on Monday, so... It's a brave new world. From your mouth to a peaceful good use for Doctors drones. John LaPook and Tara Narula, thanks for your time. Thank you.